What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome back to another episode of the Portsmouth Career Mode series. This is episode number 17 and we're going to start things off. We're going back into the transfer window and we are edging ever so closer to transfer deadline day. We made a few signings in the last episode so if you do, do want to go back and watch that, I do recommend doing so. We did pick up quite a few players on the cheap side as well which is uh, quite interesting as well so you may want to go back and watch that but yes we are going into this episode it will be a transfer deadline day special as soon as we do get to it in a few days time and uh, we have also gone in for a few players that you guys did suggest in the last episode but we got a game here against Southend and I'm going to go ahead and set up the team before I go ahead and sim it. Right so here we go into this match guys against Southend United here and we are going to be playing a fairly strong side, not our strongest side, but we are going into things nonetheless. And I want to thank you guys, first of all, for all the support that you gave me on the last episode. I did forget to mention it uh, a little a while ago in the video, but I really do appreciate all your support on this series, guys. If we can get over 50 likes again for this video, then I will upload another video tomorrow. You guys seem to be absolutely killing it with the likes. So if we can get that again, I would be uh, I would be greatly appreciated with the support that you're giving me. But... Um, Yes, we are going into this match here nonetheless, and we did take the lead, but uh, wow, Reed comes off the bench, and it looks like his goal has won us the match here, and yes, it has, despite Webster getting sent off, our young centre-back, we still managed to pick up the win, and it's our new signing, Reed, who gets the late goal, and makes sure that we pick up the 2-1 win here against Southend. So I decided I'd also go back in for Ryan Ledson, the young Everton midfielder. He is 17 years old and he has got 80 potential. He's only worth £90,000. So I thought I would go in for him and unfortunately it doesn't look like they are going to be letting him go. Despite the fact that I have offered them numerous different deals uh, with different players. Uh, but it really doesn't seem like they're going to let him go for cheap. Uh, I will offer uh, 90000 And if they do accept that, that would be absolutely fantastic. But I very much doubt it. And I really don't see him accepting that really. Which is a shame because he is a good young player with a lot of potential. So as much as I would also like to go in for James Wilson as well, he looks a little bit on the expensive side. Despite the fact that his contract is expiring in six months, he is worth one million according to the Manchester United chief executive. So really, I don't think we'll be able to go in for him at this moment in time. I don't think I've got too much money to spend anyway. Didn't think they'd like the Holmes part of the deal, but uh, I will offer 240000 I don't think they're going to accept it anyway, and uh, really that is a shame because he is a good player. Maybe in the future, in future transfer windows, I may actually be able to get him, but we'll have to wait and see. Oh won't god, we? I didn't think that would happen, but Funzo Ojo has accepted the pre-contract deal, and that is a massive steal. This guy is a fantastic midfielder, and you will be surprised next season when you do have a little look at his stats. But uh, we do have a lot of transfer offers unacceptable nonetheless, and uh, it does look like, um, so for George Forsyth, Yes, he wants his full five grand a week, and it's the same for Ekrami. So it doesn't look like I'm going to be signing those free agent goalkeepers, but I still am looking to sign uh, some older keepers, you know, backup keepers that I could get on the cheap side that are still decent in overall. We've got Mark Tyler here who I could potentially sign. We've got a lot of other older keepers as well, a bit of a, a veteran keeper I am trying to go in for at this moment in time. Someone that's just going to sit on the bench isn't going to cost me too much, but is going to do the job when he needs to do so. And really, that's the only way that I can find getting a player on the cheap that is also pretty decent. We're going to go in for the Luton Town goalkeeper, and uh, it looks like uh, I can offer about 40000 and get this guy, which is way under his valuation, and his contract is expiring in six months. So I can imagine, that even though he's a crucial first-team player to Luton, they will be, uh, well, they won't be reluctant to let him go, basically. So, before we go into the almighty transfer deadline day, we got a game here against Norwich in the FA Cup. So, what a time to have a game on transfer deadline day. And, but, well, as soon as we finish this game, we will officially be in the final 10 hours of the January transfer window, hoping to pick up a new goalkeeper. And, of course, we will also be signing Funzo Ojo. I haven't signed him just yet. Just in case uh, that I need to spend a little bit more money on priority areas, such as getting a new goalkeeper. But this is the team that I have lined up for this match. I have got Loach in goal, of course, our only goalkeeper. We've got Blackett, we've got Chorley, we've got Garia, we've got Winter at left back, who's been fantastic this season. 
who really should be on loan from Crystal Palace, but for some reason there's a bit of a glitch there, and he's actually here permanently, which I'm more than happy with. Uh, we've got Aaron's and also Wallace on the wings, which is fine. We've got Poliak sitting behind Big Romana, and then up front, we've got a combination of Taylor and Reed. We've got Zivkovic on the bench if we do need him, but he is a little bit tired, so I thought that I would put him on the bench for this match, but if we do need some more firepower, it certainly is there, but let's go into this match against Norwich, and hope we can pick up the win. Oh no, that is a good through ball. That has got to be 1-0. Of course it is. I've got a feeling we're going to get absolutely slaughtered in this match against Norwich. Because really they have a good side. They've got good players. And they are certainly a better quality side than us. I can imagine we are going to get absolutely demolished here. But I, I, again, I've got to be optimistic. I've got to hope that we can find a way back into this match. Claw our way back into this match. Really, the goalkeeper should have done a bit better, but to be honest, it is his first match that I am playing him in. So, really, he might be a little bit nervous, especially as it is the FA Cup, and we are looking to go far in this competition. Ruben Reed, Ruben Reed, he's got past everyone here. Can he have a shot at the near post? That was optimistic. That was really, really optimistic. Having a shot from there, I was hoping to force a corner, but really, we didn't even get anything from that. That is 1-0 at half-time, guys. We haven't really played too well in this first half whatsoever. We conceded a goal early on, and really, we just haven't been playing well, generally speaking. Cameron Jerome manages to score for Norwich City in the 22nd minute, but we really do need to improve our game in the second half if we've got any chance of clawing our way back into this FA Cup tie here. Right, I've decided I'm going to take off Ruben Reed for now, and I'm going to bring on Zivkovic. You know what? I'm actually going to take off Taylor, because Ruben Reed did play decent uh, in that first half. I'll bring on Zivkovic and hope that we can do something with that substitution. He's taken down by a GDFOA, and they're allowed to break here. We need to cover this, because I'm sure they're going to get the over-the-top through ball in, and they have. What are they going to do? We've got to make sure they don't cut inside here and have a shot. Oh, Ajide Afoe has had a couple of chances to get another goal in this match. But he's just failed to do so, so far. I can't believe it. We've been knocked out of the FA Cup by one goal margin. Norwich have beaten us. They certainly were the better side and displayed that in that match. But really, I thought that we had a few good chances to score. But the defenders in that game, they were really saving John Ruddy from having to make a few crucial saves. Or maybe even pick it out of his own net. But nevertheless... It is uh, Cameron Jerome, sorry, that does score for Norwich. And that does separate the two sides. We did have a few chances in the game, but really it was nothing more than that. We played quite poorly in the match and we did deserve to lose. They really showed their dominance and why they are a championship side and two divisions ahead of us. Here we go, guys, into transfer deadline day, what you've all been waiting for. We're not really going to be making too many major signings, major cover signings, but really we're hoping to make one or two signings and maybe a pre-contract signing on top of that. We'll have to wait and see what our luck is like. But uh, I have also requested some funds from the board, so it will be interesting to see if they do go ahead and accept those fund requests. I doubt they will because we already inquired for funds earlier in the season and yes we've got all transfer offers unacceptable for the goalkeepers we're going in for here and once again they're just all too valuable to the clubs it's really frustrating because that is something that I do need to get I need a backup goalkeeper right let's advance and see if we get any good news back we've got a lot of emails here so hopefully one of them does contain some good news and it does we have had a transfer offer accepted for Mark Gillespie, the goalkeeper. We are trying to sign a goalkeeper, remember, and this would be great news if we can sign this guy. So we will give him a contract and we will give him sporadic first team player. And we will hope that he does end up accepting that. I have to say, though, that was very lucky because if you have a look here, all of these other transfer offers were rejected by every single club. But yes, we finally got... A transfer offer for Ertel the Turtle. I will. I, I want him to leave. I want him to leave the club, basically, because he is just Deadwood at the club. And any offer I said I would end up accepting. So, uh, SC Arau have come in for him for 50,000. I'm going to go ahead and accept that because really I don't need him now. And he is on a lot of money per week. So, I think that would be a good signing for Arau. And it's bye bye Johannes Ertel. Maybe I can sign another player with the money I've got there, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. 
Right, so the contract offer has been accepted for Mark Gillespie. We're going to accept him and bring him into the club because we need to have got a goalkeeper that's back up oh so badly. Like, we really do need him. So we'll bring him into the club. Welcome to the club, Gillespie. And we will also go ahead and accept Ojo. So he will be coming to us next season. He looks like a really good player and hopefully a really good player for the future. There you can see that Ertl has gone to Aral for 50000 so that does mean that there's some uh, money off of the wages. And I've also gone in for a couple of pre-contract players as well uh, as Ojo. I've gone in for a couple because we really can't afford to sign another player. But I think we can just about afford to sign maybe one, maybe even two more pre-contract players. There you go. £6,332 left on the wages. Will I be able to afford it? I'm pretty sure I will. Uh, so Danny Ward, he wants uh, three grand, so I'm going to give him that. That's absolutely fine by me. And uh, if he doesn't accept that, I don't think I'll be able to give him his five grand because I also want to sign this guy here who is called Viral, I think his name is. Uh, we will give him 100,000 extra and we will give him important first team player. Hopefully he does accept that, but uh, I really do doubt it. These are the two players that I really want to sign. Uh, but if I can't make it happen, we've already made so many pre-contract signings anyway, as well as signings as well. We also need to have a little look at Gillespie's stats as well uh, before I forget it. So Danny Ward has accepted his pre-contract, which is absolutely fantastic. We'll bring him into the club and he will be in the club for next season. We are really building in depth here, aren't we, for next season? We've got a transfer offer for Ricky Holmes though, so this could free up some space. And uh, it is a transfer of... 350,000. I'm going to counter off for 400,000. And if they do accept that, I'll certainly let him go because he isn't really going to get past his potential. He's 27 years old. He's got about 65 potential. But really, I don't see him hitting that. And again, he loves living here. This is just really, really annoying, isn't it? I mean, why? Just accept. I've got two pounds left after that, so I'll only be able to buy maybe a packet of crisps or something after I've signed this guy. I'm really, really, I don't know why I keep saying that, but um, yes, uh, he loves living here. Again, all of that rubbish, and it's very, very frustrating. We will let Ricky Holmes go and look at the wages. They go up drastically when we sell him. So uh, Ricky Holmes will be leaving the club. And uh, if we can sign this guy as his replacement for next season, because bear in mind, Rolando Aarons will be going back to Newcastle after the end of the season. So if we can sign this guy, he will be a straight re replacement, basically, uh, for uh, the departing Ricky Holmes. But uh, we've got a transfer offer for Devara here. So we've got the player sold, and uh, that's absolutely fine. We can give this guy a better contract now, so I'll give him four grand a week. Uh, I'll give him, yeah, I'll give him £4,100 a week. And uh, I will give him crucial first team player again. I really hope he does accept that because that's how I got Ojo to accept his contract. But we've got a transfer offer for Devara. Do I need to let this guy go? I mean, it's a bit risky letting this guy go. I, I think if I let him go, then I do need to bring in another centre back. But uh, you know what? I think 130,000 is a good amount and he's on three grand a week, which is ridiculous. So I'll accept that and it's bye bye Joe Devera. Maybe I'll bring in another, another centre back. I'll go and have a look at the free agents and the pre-contracts and I'll be back in a minute. So it doesn't look like we're going to get any emails back and no, we aren't. So that is the end of transfer deadline day, guys. We made quite a few signings on deadline day and sold three of our players on deadline day as well. So um, a very productive deadline day. And we also did sign, um, I think it was that striker. I can't remember what his name is. Uh, but so I think it's Danny Ward, I think it is. So we signed him on a pre-contract and we also sold a few of our players. But this is going to be the end of the episode, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed. And if you have, please be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. As it really does help out my channel. But other than that, guys, I'm going to have to leave it there. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching.